Hey everyone, and welcome to the first real video on my Primate Pastimes channel. I'm Jim the Ape, and for those of you who don't know, I'm a pretty big gamer. And I wanted to make a video about what I got this Christmas, which was basically PlayStation VR. Now, PlayStation VR was way too expensive for me to get as a Christmas present, even from my very generous family. So what I did was I simply said, okay, give me gift cards and I'll put the gift cards towards it. And I got the PlayStation VR system, and so far, I really like it. And I've played numerous games and various apps for it so far. So, I wanted to make this list, which is the five best and the five worst PlayStation VR games I've played so far. If you think of this list like a sliding scale from negative 5 to positive 5, there is actually a 0, and it's not so much a game because there's not really any goals. It's actually the first thing that I tried on PlayStation VR just to get myself used to the concept of VR and just to get myself used to what it looks like and how it feels. And it's called Perfect. It drops you in a VR environment, like on a beach, and basically, you just look around and, you know, there's a couple objects that you can kind of interact with. It's pretty good, but it's not really good enough to be on the best list. I just thought it was a nice neutral zero. So, starting off the list of the five best is my number five, and it's called Harmonix Music. Again, this isn't really a game, but there is some interactivity, so I'm counting it. Basically, what Harmonix Music is, is you can take a uh, flash drive, or you can get music via the PlayStation Music app. And what you can do is you can, you know, listen to it on, like, a beach level, and there's different objects you can interact with that make different visualizations based on the beat of the song and, you know, based on the, the audio levels, basically. And there's different levels. There's the beach. There's one where there's, like, characters that you can make them dance with the move controllers. And you can also draw things on another level with the move controllers and then there's the kaleidoscope where you're basically inside of a kaleidoscope and it makes you look like you're moving down a tunnel of just like random patterns and colors so i figured it was a good bottom of the best list i'd still recommend it but not highly because like i said it's not really a game number four on the best list is rise of the tomb raider 20 year celebration edition blood ties vr mode i know that's a mouthful but that's because this entire game isn't a VR game. It's just a VR level. I'll be honest, I didn't really play the entire Rise of the Tomb Raider game. I played a couple levels, and then it said I unlocked the Blood Ties level, and that's really what I wanted to try. So then I, I exited the campaign and went straight for the, the VR level. And I really liked it. It's basically exploring the Croft Mansion, looking for stuff, and trying to unravel a mystery. And uh, I won't spoil it, but it has to do with Lara's family. And it definitely encourages a lot of exploration and it encourages you know looking around in each room getting collectibles and things like that and overall i thought it was uh, a really fun experience number three is until dawn rush of blood and it's an on rails shooter where you're literally in like a rail car and it takes you through levels and you shoot at stationary targets and then you also have to shoot at enemies that come at you and try to kill you there's also a upgrades, weapon upgrades that you can shoot. It'll give you a better weapon. I believe the motion controllers are required for this, which I didn't have any problem. Uh, I thought the motion controllers functioned fine. I generally like the motion controllers. Sometimes they can be a little awkward if they're not reading right, but I think they're okay when they work well, and they were working fine for me for this game. I will say there was one moment during this game that actually genuinely creeped me out, and it was on the level level where you fight a giant spider. And I didn't really have a problem with the giant spider. For some reason, it didn't creep me out that much. But apparently, what's scripted to happen at the end of the level, after you've defeated the giant spider, is all of the little spiders, and these are like tarantulas, mind you, come pouring out of the dead giant spider's body and crawl up onto your cart and basically over the screen, causing a black screen. So for a moment, it looks like these tarantulas are 
are crawling all over you. Yeah, that creeped me out a little bit. But overall, I think it was a pretty solid game and definitely something I would recommend for horror fans and people who like shooters. Number two is Worlds or PlayStation Worlds. And it's basically a sampler platter of VR games. So within this one, I have basically the five games that are in it as kind of a sub best list. And the number five, in my opinion, was VR Luge. Now, it was a fairly solid game. You're basically sliding downhill on a board. The thing is, like, from the perspective of the game, the only control you have is you turn the board by turning your head. The controls were a little wonky on this because it just, it seemed to be a little bit tricky to get a feel for the sensitivity of how far to turn your head. It seemed like a lot of times I was turning too far and I was, like, slamming into the sides. To me, it wasn't all that fun, but I think other people could probably find enjoyment in it. And my number four is Ocean Descent. This one also kind of not really a game because there's not a whole lot of interactivity. It's just kind of a, you know, sit here and look around you at all the pretty sights. But it is rendered really well and it does give you a good digital recreation of what it might look like to be in a diving cage that is descending into the ocean and all the marine life that goes past you. So not a whole lot of interactivity, not a whole lot of replay value, but still very well crafted as far as the visuals. Number three is Danger Ball and what this basically is is 3D Pong. It's just a ball back and forth between two paddles, but it's 3D. You have like a little mostly transparent paddle that is corresponding to where your VR headset is. And as you move your head around, you move the paddle. There's various abilities of the opponents that you can play against, the AI opponents. Ultimately, the goal is just keep the ball from going past your paddle. And overall, it was pretty fun and pretty enjoyable to play through all of the AI opponents. I think there's other modes in the game, but I just played like the single player. Number two is Scavenger's Odyssey. This was a game where you play an alien in a mech and there's like a story to it and you kind of walk through and you have to fight these little alien things. And one of the coolest parts of this game was the jumping mechanic where you aim your mech at something that you can't just walk to, whether it's a, a piece of floating debris or just jumping a chasm, you leap to it and the cool thing about that is some of them were not just flat surfaces parallel with the ground that you were already standing on there was actually some kind of you would be leaping and it would turn you while you were leaping and it, it, it created kind of a cool motion effect this is definitely something that I wouldn't recommend if you're prone to motion sickness or feeling dizzy I didn't have a problem with it but other people might and number one the best mini game on worlds in my opinion is the London heist it's basically a shooter. The story is pretty short. It centers around a heist, obviously, I'm trying to steal this diamond and having to shoot some guys along the way. And uh, I really like the story. Most of all, I like the shooting mechanics. And it's basically just point and shoot. It was pretty cool. I think the part I like about the shooting mechanics the most is that if you're using the motion controllers, you have to reload with the motion controller like in your left hand like you grab a clip and slide it into the gun in your right hand and you could probably switch hands if you're left-handed and I just thought that was a really nice touch it made it more immersive it made it feel just a little bit more realistic and my number one best PlayStation VR game I've played so far is Batman Arkham VR. Now this should come as no surprise to anyone who knows me because I'm a huge Batman nerd and I love the Batman Arkham games, especially because they share voice actors with the Batman animated series that I grew up with, specifically Kevin Conroy as the voice of Batman and Mark Hamill as the voice of Joker. And Batman Arkham VR is an installment in that franchise. In fact, Batman Arkham VR is pretty much the one game that really motivated me to get PlayStation VR. I wanted to see what else I could do on it, but the main reason I wanted PlayStation VR in the first place was because Batman Arkham VR was exclusive to it. And I gotta be honest, the game did not disappoint. It was really fun throwing Batarangs with the Move Controller. It was really fun picking up the grapple gun with the Move Controller, pointing it up at the Batwing and grappling into it to go to different locations. And yeah, the story was pretty short, but what do you expect? It's a game that's largely based on showing off VR technology, but 
even though it's a short story, I love how it works into the Batman Arkham series of video games and how it's actually canon. Even though it doesn't seem that way. I won't give away any story spoilers, but I will tell anyone who is curious about this game that the events of Batman Arkham VR take place after the events of Arkham City, but before the events of Batman Arkham Knight. And they don't take place in the quote-unquote real world. Yeah, it's kind of like the story of Batman Arkham VR is a dream, or a nightmare, as you might say, but it's a dream sequence or a nightmare that makes perfect sense when you put it in context to the other games of the series. It kind of explains some of the behavior of Batman in Batman Arkham Knight. Some of the ways he behaves towards the Bat family. Robin, Nightwing, you can kind of tell something's off when you just play Batman Arkham Knight, but if you are aware of the story in Batman Arkham VR and you look at it as a nightmare that he had before the events of Arkham Knight, you can kind of understand how that nightmare would have affected his behavior. So it was a lot of fun, and I liked the forensic aspects of the game, analyzing a crime scene and using the forensic scanner to scan through things and evidence, and even the Riddler challenges, which of course have to be present in a Batman Arkham game, even they were kind of fun. Probably I can't say enough good things about this game, so I would just say, if it sounds like something you you might be into, maybe think about trying to get it. I know some people can't afford it, but just think about it. And now on to the worst. Some of the games that I've played on PlayStation VR haven't been terrible, but there were definitely some that are worthy of being in this list. Here we go, the five worst PlayStation VR games I've played so far. Number five, Wayward Sky. Now keep in mind, I only played the demo of this, but to me, this didn't seem like a game that had to be a VR game. Yeah, it had like the 3D and 360 degree effects and everything, but it was basically just a point and click adventure game. You aren't in direct control of the character so much as you just point and tell them where to go. To be honest, just from a gameplay mechanic standpoint, it didn't seem all that fun. But considering that I only played the demo, and considering that it might just be a kind of video game that I personally don't enjoy, I left it low on the list. The fourth worst PlayStation VR game I've played is the Brookhaven Experiment. The thing about this game, I kind of had hopes for it, because when I looked at the trailer, it looked to me like Doom inspired where you know there's monsters that run at you and you have to shoot at them and everything a vr doom game would be fucking amazing but after starting to play the brookhaven experiment and only really getting like two levels in it wasn't all that fun like there were clearly other weapons that you could unlock but i was only able to unlock the default gun and a couple of attachments for it and it just it wasn't all that fun because you're standing still you have no control over your movement except that you can turn the camera around 180 degrees with the push of a button and you know zombies and other kind of monsters run at you and you have to shoot them problem is you run out of ammo way too fast then you have to resort to melee and then by that time you're pretty much dead and the frustrating thing about it is it seemed to be more of a resource based game where you have to conserve ammo and you have to be careful about what upgrades you choose to unlock when it gives you the option and you have to be careful and watch your health, which seems all fine in theory, but I think one of the reasons it disappointed me was because my expectations were more along the lines of the Doom games, except for Doom 3, where it's basically balls to the wall, just killing monsters and shooting up the place. And that kind of action was not what I got, so I was kind of disappointed. The number three worst PlayStation VR game I've played so far is Here They Lie. Now, Angry Joe did a rant video about this where he was claiming that it was the worst PlayStation VR game he's played, and I would have to say that, Joe, you may be wrong about that, especially with number one on this list, which he may not have heard of, or if he heard of it, he may not have played it. 
So here they lie is basically like a horror type game where you have free movement, you can move around. What sucks about it is that when you go to move the camera with the right stick, it blacks out the screen and then comes back as if being able to turn the camera without interrupting the frame would make you dizzy. For me personally, it's more disorienting to do the blackout thing. Basically the plot of the game seems to be your girlfriend or your ex-girlfriend keeps kind of appearing and then disappearing and you're trying to follow her. The graphics aren't all that good, but you're in a city where things are turning to shit. It's dilapidated, it's kind of horror cliche type stuff happening in the background, and there's these phones that'll ring, and if you pick them up, it's just, I guess, your friend talking to you, like, hey man, what's going on? To be honest, like, halfway through playing it, I realized that you have a flashlight. I didn't even know there was a flashlight in this game, and you're walking through some really legitimately dark areas where you basically can't see anything, and you just have to kind of move the left stick you know, and turn your head around until you find some light. I didn't even realize there was a flashlight in the game. Like, the game doesn't really tell you anything. And so you're trying to follow your girlfriend through the city, and there's these weird, like, creatures that are kind of, they look like they're human, but they're maybe not, because they're wearing weird things on their heads. And then there's these weird people with animal masks on. Some of them are, like, naked and masturbating. There's at least one who's naked and masturbating. There's almost like this weird society of people in animal masks, and there are some that are violent and will try to kill you if you come near them. There are others that are just kind of hanging around doing their own weird thing. And at one point in the game, there is actually a red light district in this city. So you're going through, and you're seeing these weird people in animal masks doing sexual things. I'll agree it's an unsettling atmosphere, and I'll give it credit for that, but gameplay-wise, it's just really boring. And you're just wandering around looking for the next thing to advance the story. So it's less of a game and more of just walking around simulator. And I think Angry Joe said something about you can't even die in the game. I don't really think that's true because I ran across some rather violent individuals who kind of hit me and then the screen went red and then there was this weird sun rising up above the water screen which reminded me a lot of the opening of Lion King and then I didn't know where to go from there and it didn't appear to be doing anything so at that point I just hit the pause button and went to reload my last checkpoint. It was a really weird game and I I didn't experience any of the motion sickness that I think Angry Joe alluded to. I just I just thought it was really weird, and that's why it's on this list. Number two, and this might just be subjective, is Sports Bar VR. Now, I thought it sounded like a cool idea. Oh, you're in a sports bar, and you're playing pool, and you can play air hockey, and you can throw darts and stuff. Uh, I think one of the problems with it might just be that it's kind of... I, I think it's meant for multiplayer, and I'm not a social gamer at all. I'm pretty much not social in general. So whenever a video game requires that I have friends, I don't like it. But beyond that, and this may have just been a problem with the way I was playing it, but the mechanics of trying to play these games with the motion controllers just didn't seem to be working right. And maybe it was because I was sitting and the game said at the beginning when it's calibrating everything, it said they recommend standing, so maybe I would have a better experience if I was standing. But clearly, the motion controllers were just all over the place, and I had a really hard time getting used to the mechanics of just moving around and switching from from playing pool to playing air hockey. And while the motion controls seemed very glitchy, I think one of the problems I had with it was also that the kinds of games that are in it, basically pool, throwing darts, and air hockey, are things that you can do in real life very easily. Again, maybe I would have a better experience with it if I was standing, and maybe it would work a little bit better, but it's tricky to play VR games standing with my current setup, because then what ends up happening is the processor unit for the VR is usually either in the air, weighing down, it's like someone's pulling down by the wire that's attached to the headset, or I have to like set it up very carefully on a chair, but then I have to be careful not to bump into the chair, so it's kind of annoying, so most of the time I play VR games sitting. But overall, I think Sports Bar VR is really only on this list because of my personal experience. I think other people might have better experiences with it, maybe if they have friends it's better, maybe if you play standing it's better. Either way, I personally didn't like it, 
That's why it's on this list. And the number one worst PlayStation VR game I've played so far is... Weeping Doll. Now this game costs 10 bucks, and I still feel like I got ripped off. This is like the most cliche horror game that you could possibly imagine, story-wise. It's just, I will say the one cliche they don't really do to its credit is there's not really any jump scares. But still, the story is very cliche. It's so much about like, ooh, you know, there's darkness here, and oh, I wonder what's going on. Ooh, creepy child things. And it wouldn't be so bad if there was a better game around it, but there's not. The game mechanics are terrible. You can't even really move around in this game in, in a way that makes any kind of sense. Basically, the way you move is you move the left stick and then there's a transparent silhouette of your character and it goes wherever you move the stick and then you have to hit a button to teleport to where you just moved the silhouette thing. Yeah, that makes so much more sense than just actually having a move button. And then you can turn around with like snap turns with I think either the R1 and L1 or the right stick but the movement makes absolutely no sense and then you naturally kind of turn your head because it's a VR game and then you end up like facing away from the television and that's just the movement. The voice acting is really bad especially the character that's supposed to be like the creepy girl and you know the the doll that somehow talks and it, it's Terrible voice acting. It doesn't sound scary at all. If anything, it's fucking hilarious voice acting. And just playing through the game, like, it takes a long time to even figure out how to get around. And once you kind of get the hang of that, you have to figure out just little puzzles to get keys, to get into different rooms, and to, you know, try to follow along with the story. And the puzzles are pretty fucking easy. One of them is literally just where it's like a board, and there's room for like four by four squares, and you have to find the squares in the room, which are not hard to find, and you have to put the squares in their right place to form a picture, and then there's a combination with clockwise and counterclockwise, because apparently there is a lighting fixture in this house that if you turn it clockwise and counterclockwise in the right order, it opens up a secret passageway. And when you get into that secret passageway, what is your reward? The same story that the game tells you like 10 fucking times throughout it, but like a longer version of it. That's the thing. The idea is to progress the story and to learn the whole story. But here's the annoying part. When you get more of the story, it's only after they've repeated the beginning of the story. So it's always, once upon a time, there were two girls and one of them had a birthmark. And it's the same beginning of the story that will play every single time you advance the story until eventually, oh, this is what happened. This is why this place seems to be like haunted now. And it's just just really clumsily done in, I think, every possible way. The game mechanics are bad, the voice acting is bad, the puzzles are easy as hell, and the story isn't even that scary. It's just kind of cliche horror. And the funny thing about it is, I think this game was originally Japanese. And like so many other Japanese horror stories, it just got transported to America, where they put in American voice acting, slapped an American paint job on something that was originally Japanese. And I don't think this one translated all that well. I don't know. All I can say is that just from everything, from I think every possible angle, Weeping Doll was absolutely the worst PlayStation VR game I've played so far. And I really hope that I don't end up playing a game that's bad enough to be worse than this. Anyway, I'm gonna end it there. I hope you enjoyed my list and hopefully I'll see you next time for whatever I decide to talk about next on this channel. Channel. As always, thank you for watching. I'll catch you next time. Stay great, apes. And there's a weeping doll that wants to talk to you. It's got a ruined eye, a red birthmark. 
And there's a weeping doll That sounds like a cartoon It's got a pretty mouth That never opens